how can the presidential candidates even begin to talk about an urban agenda without including our nation's mayors? Are people stuck inside the beltway supposed to decide what is in the best interest of our nation's cities? You don't need to spend money on polls to figure out what the American people want. Mayors are on 24 hours, at the coffee shop, at PTA meetings, at church, at Little League games. We don't need polls. We are the polls. We know what Americans want, and we know what Americans need. We will present to the next president the urban agenda for the first 100 days. The next president must understand that an investment in America's cities is an investment in America's people, and it is an investment in America's future. That our next president should be the mayor of the United States. The stakes could not be higher. The status quo has clearly not worked. We need a clean and historic break with the past. While the 20th century saw the end of European political and economic dominance, will the 21st century see the end of American dominance? World powers today compete for economic strength. The weapons are not nuclear or missiles. The weapons are information and currency. China, Russia, India, Brazil, and many others are gaining on us by investing in their people, investing in their cities, and investing in their nation. They're also buying us out. In 10 years, our foreign-held debt has doubled, and half of our debt is now foreign-owned. Not surprisingly, China holds the greatest portion of our debt, $1.5 trillion. $1.5 trillion. And we ask them for money so we can buy oil from the Middle East. Other countries have figured out that it is easier to buy us than to bomb us. A recent report shows that Moscow is now the world's most expensive city. Our thirst for oil has put us on a path where we are engaged in the greatest transfer of wealth in human history. $700, $700 billion a year all going overseas. Just think about what this money could do to improve American cities and the people of America who live in those cities. What will it take for our next president to realize he cannot afford, that we cannot afford, to ignore the needs of Americans? After 9-11, the term America's mayor was coined. It meant reassuring all of us during tough times, providing hope that we can get through this. Truth is, every day in America, in small towns and big cities, there are mayors who earn this title, reassuring us that not all is lost, restoring pride, providing confidence, that we, too, will get through this. And we do this because of the opportunities that this country still holds, the promise that it stands for. We do this because it is the only country in the world that inspires a dream, a phrase that was coined in the early part of the last century during the Great Depression, a dream of a land in which life should be better and richer and fuller for everyone with opportunity for all. Mayors have never lost sight of that. 
The American people are yearning. They want to dream again. Ours is a country founded on the belief in equality and self-governance. We forged the path for the rest of the world. We build skyscrapers, eradicate disease, liberate continents, send men to the moon. We are Americans. We have sacrificed before. We must do it again. There is no reason we cannot be greater than what we already are. There is no reason we cannot overcome these challenges, seize this opportunity to leave cities where poverty is not a lifelong sentence, but a temporary condition to be overcome, to leave cities that combine economic prosperity with environmental sustainability, to leave cities where our children can receive the best education, afford a home, hold a good paying job, have access to the arts, and live in clean and safe neighborhoods, to leave cities where everyone has access to the promises of the dream. This is what mayors do, and this is what the next President of the United States must do, so that our children and their children may inherit cities, may inherit a country better than was left to us. Thank you.